Hello, welcome. Today we will look at contrast words. So today's module is on contrast words. What are contrast words? Big, small, tall, short. These are all contrast words. Opposing in ideas. It need not be just mere opposites like the examples that I've just mentioned. Big, small or um, tall, short, strong, weak. But in the context of a sentence, when we use words like however, even though, despite, in spite of, you know, at, at some point, ideas come in opposition and that is when we use contrast words. So there are a handful of contrast words. Let's check a few of them in today's module. Now, I'm going to explain all of this using a few example sentences, okay? So let's take this first sentence um, to understand the use of but here, okay? And then we will replace the word but with other contrast words and see if the sentence makes sense. Okay. So the first example is I invited Vaiga to the party, she didn't come. So this is the context here that I have invited Vaiga to a party. It's my birthday. I have invited her for my birthday party and she has not come. So, a different way of putting it is, instead of saying I invited Vaiga to the party, she didn't come, I could also say I invited Vaiga to the party, but she didn't come. So, look at this sentence. When I say something like I invited Vaiga to the party, but she didn't come, I am talking about the result. What is the result here? That she didn't come. And this result is in opposition to the expectation that I had. What is the expectation I've had? The expectation I had when I was inviting Vaiga was that she would turn up for my birthday party. But she has not and therefore the sentence, I invited Vaiga to the party but she has not come. So, do you see that with this sentence, you see that the result is in opposition to the expectation and therefore, but can be termed as a contrast word and but is the simplest contrast word. There are few other contrast words that we generally, or that we commonly use in our day-to-day -day conversations, but is the simplest among the contrast words. It's the most simple among all the contrast words. Now comes the word although. Let's check the use. Although I invited Vaiga to the party, she didn't come. Now check the following sentence. Vaiga didn't come to the party, although I invited her. Now what's the difference between these two sentences? So, the first thing that I want you to note is that although can be used interchangeably, right? Although can be used at the beginning of the sentence and although can be used in the middle of the sentence. So, this is the primary sentence. I invited Vaiga to the party. She didn't come. Now, how do I use although uh, now how do I use although in this particular sentence? You, sh you could use it in two ways. Although I invited Vaiga to the party, she didn't come. Or you could also say Vaiga didn't come to the party although I invited her. What's the difference between these two sentences? There should be some difference, right? So, what comes after although has more emphasis. 
here in the first if you see the expectation comes first followed by the result so in this sentence expectation comes first and then comes the result whereas in this sentence it's the opposite or it's vice versa which is the result comes first and then comes the sentence now when result comes first and expectation comes next which is after all though when the expectation comes it adds focus to the expectation though both mean the same though meaning wise both these sentences are same in this particular sentence you know what follows although has an additional focus so here expectation is additionally focused okay now what about the word though though is a shortened form of although now if we have although then why use though there is a good reason for that the the reason behind it is although is mostly used in formal locations whereas though is an informal version of although so we use though more often in speech than in writing like although it is possible to use though in the beginning and in the middle of the sentence that is though i invited vaiga to the party she didn't come also vaiga didn't come to the party though i invited her i hope i made that clear so talking about although and though although is used in uh, you know formal locations you know more in writing than in speech i mean if you want to use uh, one of them in in writing then i would suggest you to go for although than though and though is a shortened form of although because of which we use though more in speech than in writing both although and though can be used uh, in the beginning of the sentence and in the middle of the sentence like uh, the examples that we see here now let's look at um the word even though so even though is a stronger form of although and so with that stronger form what does it convey well it uh, clearly or evidently expresses disappointment particularly in the context of this sentence so taking the primary sentence we are using the same primary sentence that is i invited vaiga to the party she didn't come that's a primary sentence how do we use even though how do we connect these two sentences with even though you could say even though i invited vaiga to the party she didn't come or you could also say vaiga didn't come to the party even though i invited her which among these two sentences explicitly reveals disappointment well the answer is the second sentence because the expectation here the expectation follows the word even though that is a contrast word therefore this sentence is more stronger than the previous sentence that you see on the screen so here the result is on focus whereas here the expectation is on focus therefore we could say this uh, indicates um disappointment the focus here is on how the person has not met um, my expectation so i hope i made that point clear if you have any doubts regarding these please uh, put up your queries in the discussion forum and we will answer all your queries now let's get to the word however the word however has the same meaning as but 
So, going back to the same uh, primary sentence that we had, I invited Vaiga to the party, she didn't come. We connected it with but, which is the simplest contrast word. And I've just now said that the word however has the same meaning as but. So, therefore, however can replace but. And we could say something like, I invited Vaiga to the party, however, she did not come. Now, what I want you to notice is, I have not used didn't, that is contraction. Um, I have discussed in detail in many uh, previous videos about contraction. Um, if you are not sure about um, contraction, if you are not sure about this concept, then I would urge you to go back and uh, refer to the previous videos or I would ask you to surf the internet and understand the concept of contraction. So, I have not used contraction here in this particular sentence, whereas I have used contraction which is din with the previous sentence wherein I have used but. Can you guess the reason? Well, the reason is however is a formal word. So, we use however more in writing than in speech. It's, it's always better to use the word but in speech and however in writing. Another important point that you should keep in mind is that it's better to avoid contractions in formal writing. I said in formal writing, okay. So, better avoid contractions um, in formal writing. So, so, when I say that however is a formal word, then it is better that you do not use contraction in a formal sentence. I hope I made that clear. Now, coming to the words despite and in spite of. Well, both mean the same. You can use them interchangeably like um, I have shown in the example here. Deva decided to, so this is the primary sentence, okay. Um, um, my primary sentence is a sentence where I have used the contrast word even though, okay. So, here let us check the usage of despite and in spite of. Reva decided to buy an expensive car even though her mother objected to it. So, this is a primary sentence. Now, how do I use despite in this sentence? How do I rephrase this sentence and use despite? That is a question. I could say Reva decided to buy an expensive car despite her mother's objection. Okay. And I have already told you that both despite and in spite of mean same mean the same, so they can be used interchangeably, which means, so you could say, Reva decided to buy an expensive car in spite of her mother's objection. Now, let us um, compare these sentences with the sentences that were used previously with words like though and although. Or for example, let us let us compare and contrast it with um, this particular sentence even though, leave all though and though. Let us compare and contrast the sentence structures, okay, um, of you know these two sentences with that of the sentence which has even though. What do you see is the difference? One you see is what follows after despite and in spite of is phrases and what kind of phrases, what can follow after despite and in spite of is either a, a verb phrase or a noun phrase, okay. Whereas, what follows after even though or although um, 
or you know the, the contrast words that we have seen um, previously in the in the previous slides are independent sentences her mother objected to it it can stand on its own right whereas they are their phrases and therefore cannot stand on its own her mother's objections uh, it, it's not a complete sentence by itself i want you to understand that the structure of uh, sentences change drastically even when we use um, words that belong to the same category such as you know the words that we have discussed so far fall under the category of contrast words despite in spite of although even though however but all of these fall under the category of contrast words but sentence structure varies finally i would like to draw your attention to this this particular phrase that is despite of and that is absolutely wrong you don't say despite of you either say in spite of or you could you either use in spite of or despite but not despite of so that was a very brief session on contrast words i will meet you with a different topic on a different day until then stay safe take care bye